Hello dear friends, this is Pastor Roy speaking to you again, thanks for tuning in. I have a, uh, a thought, a message, perhaps it will minister to your heart and to your soul. Um, as a man of 78 years of age, if, if I died nobody would uh, say, you know, he died young. But I'm here, and I'm here for a purpose. And I'd like to share something with you that's found in the scripture. And it's um, found in the Gospel of John, the uh, 14th chapter, and you know it. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. Uh, the uh, word mansions, I speak Romanian, and uh, the word there is loquienza, or locus. Uh, it's the place where you hang out, the place where you live, the place where you dwell. It's not an ornate building necessarily, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's a dwelling place. Uh, Moses seemed to speak of it when he said, uh, uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Jesus was saying that um, he's going to prepare a mansion for us, that where he is, present tense, where he is, there we may be also. And so um, the question arose uh, from um, his uh, followers, and that is, uh, I don't understand, Jesus, where, where you say, uh, where, where are you? And uh, Jesus very clearly said, uh, well, uh, let's look at what he didn't say. He didn't say, I'm, planet Earth, I'm on planet Earth. He didn't say, I'm in Israel. He didn't say, I'm in the upper room or uh, the hills, the Garden of Gethsemane. He, he didn't say that. Where did Jesus say that he is? Present tense. Not where he will be or where he was. Where he is at that moment. And Jesus says, Don't you know that I am, here we come, in the Father? And the Father is in me. What is Jesus saying there? He's saying that his dwelling place, his abiding place, the place where he hangs out is in the Father. That was while he was here on earth. What was Jesus doing uh, when he prayed all night? Did he have a prayer list, a laundry list? Um, Father, do this, do that, do the other thing. Bless Mary, say, Sam, and uh, Jim, and so on. No. He was connecting with, abiding in the presence of the Father. He was kind of marinating in the love and the presence of his heavenly Father, aided by the Holy Spirit that rested upon him when he was baptized and never left. And so what, what can we say to this? Well, we look back at Moses, he seemed to have tapped into something. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Why is it, he says, the secret place, that nobody knows it? No, I suggest that it's secret because it's only you and him. You can't bring your wife, you can't bring your friend, someone. They can have their own secret place but you can't take them into your secret place it's just one on one 
which is say, he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow, the protection, the provision, the promises. He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is no equal, there is no one that even begins to approach. And Jesus has somehow uh, continued to develop this theme where he, he was saying, uh, He that abideth in me and I in him. In other words, there's this abiding presence, uh, a dwelling place where you hang out, a secret place. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, He that abideth in me and I in him, he, he mentions that two things happen. First one, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same, here it is, bringeth forth much fruit. It's not laziness. It's not slothfulness. It's not a desire to get up and run programs or run hither and thither and no. It's it's he that abideth in me and I in him, the dwelling place of abiding in Christ, as Christ abode in the Father, that person has a very fruitful life, shall bear much fruit. Again, it's 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 not, you know, seven, so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. And, and not that at all. It's prioritizing, it's uh, getting guidance and, and direction from the Holy Spirit and empowerment. And uh, as uh, the Apostle Paul once said, I have not uh, uh, withheld anything. I have declared unto you the whole counsel of God. We can't just run with what God wants, because the whole counsel is not only what, but when and where and how and who. And so when you are abiding in Him and staying in Him, you know, He can download to you in a moment uh, books full of information or direction or the how or the who. And so he that abideth in me and I am that person becomes very fruitful. Now, what is the second point? He said, and their fruit shall remain. He's not talking here about what we, the Apollo refers to as wood, hay, and stubble. No, when you, when you abide in him, in the secret place of the Most High, where Jesus was when he was all night, and they call it prayer, and it was prayer. Then when you do do something under the direction and prompting uh, of the Holy Spirit, not only what, but when, where, how, waiting for God's timing even, then what you do do will have eternal consequences. In other words, it's going to last. And, uh, uh, you know, as you know, you know, cars, houses, all stuff that we accumulate, it's all going to rust. It's all going to collapse. It's uh, all going to return to anarchy. And uh, so, uh, what, am I, what am I saying? I'm saying, dear friend, the Apostle Paul also seemed to get something. He had all kinds of degrees, all kind of bragging points, and he says, I count all this but rubbish for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He was hungering, he was thirsting for something beyond 
serving and doing missionary work. He 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 was he was pressing towards something that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. And it's not going to always be easy in the fellowship of suffering. What the heart yearns for is the presence of God. Nothing else will satisfy him. Nothing else even comes close to satisfy him. And if a, may I say of a personal nature, I pastored a church for 20 years uh, in Westchester County of New York. And there was a period of time where we experienced the presence and the power and the demonstrations of the power of the Holy Spirit in significant and unusual ways. People came from distances to come and see and learn and behold. And sometimes there wasn't enough room on the carpet for those who were in prayer or meditating or responding to the Holy Spirit. Oh, I remember standing on the platform and as the Spirit of God was moving through the congregation, it was like wind through a wheat field. I mean, you can see it doesn't blow straight. It sometimes goes in a, a um, S shape meandering through the, the the sheaves of wheat and wherever the spirit went you could tell because people who were standing just seemed to fall back into their chairs and see healings take place right before our eyes as we we prayed things disappeared things grew things changed and we've seen people respond to the calling of the Lord and salvation. And all of those things are wonderful and legitimate and absolutely biblical. <clears throat> but I confess to you, as I drove home from church, I knew that was great, but that's not it. And so I asked the question, what, what is the ultimate for the Christian while here on earth? Is it to evangelize and win many souls for Christ? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. Is it to see signs and wonders and miracles? Well, of course, that's part of it. But it, Jesus made it absolutely very clear, I believe that those things will happen, but that's not the only. The apostle, I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, that I might know him. And so the story is that the, the couple had a new baby child, and they invited friends and neighbors to come and celebrate the birth of the, the child. And, they had the child in a corner in the uh, a carriage uh, to bring the child out at the appropriate moment to introduce the child to the guests. And as guests came in, they put their coats on where the baby was laying, not noticing the child. But somehow they, they covered up the child so when they went to bring out the child, they had to uncover the coats and everything to uncover the child. And dear brother, dear sister, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Nothing satisfies but Jesus. Nothing can enter into the heart and the soul of man to be bathed in the love of Jesus Christ is nothing like it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a great grandfather. I, I've known the love that one can experience on planet Earth, and I, 
I, I, I, I, I, I, say, I love it. But then in the presence of Jesus, it's out of this world. And it doesn't even begin to compare. And then the peace, nothing really matters. But doing the will of God and being in nothing else matters. Such peace and such joy. I, I, I experience ecstasy without using illegal drugs or any drugs of any kind. But the joy, as the Bible says, in thy presence. Where? In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at the right hand, God is not after against pleasure. Not at all. But at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore, without a next morning hangover. Oh dear saint, let us press on to know him, whom to know is life eternal. And I share these things from the bottom of my heart. And I'm still pressing. Join me. God bless you and thanks for listening. Pastor Roy, your missionary to Romania and beyond, and his servant. Goodbye for now.